What's up, divas and Devo? So you guys already know what time it is. It's Wednesday. It's Real Talk Wednesday. And you know something? I really need to pace myself because I do a lot during the daytime and I really try to get these done like super early because I have so much to do. Um, so I have like 45 minutes left before I get mumsy and it's like almost three o'clock. It's 2.23. So it's like, you know what, April, you need, I just need to get it together. Okay. So without me wasting any time, chit chatting and talking i just want to say a welcome back to my channel for those of you guys who are new to my channel my name is april on wednesdays we do real talk wednesdays i've been doing this for many years this is not my first rodeo meaning this is not my first channel with youtube so i have been doing this on my prior channel um but yeah so basically all you need to do is just send me an email to muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com if you have an issue or situation that you would like for me to discuss with you guys um or discuss with everybody on YouTube. You can always change the names of your characters or the people that you're talking to or referring to about in the emails. Um, and please put in the subject line, Real Talk. Um, other than that, um, yes, that is what I do um, besides hair, makeup. Oh, well, I don't really do makeup because let me tell you guys, I have not done like a makeup video in like a long time, like a few months because... <sighs> First of all, I'm not a makeup person, like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't do, like, a lot of makeup tutorials. I am not the best at doing makeup. I don't even claim to be the best at doing hair, you know what I'm saying? I just like to do hair. I like to make wigs, and, you know what I mean? I don't know about doing hair on people. I've never had a sew-in. I don't even know how to do a sew-in or a weave on anyone. Um, I know how to do braids and box braids, and I know how to make wigs and make them blend in and make them look as natural as possible, like make them look like they're yours at least. Um, and that's only because I'm paranoid. I'm paranoid about a lot of shit, um, meaning I don't want anybody to know that I have on a wig or anything. Like, I wouldn't even really care if you thought I had a good ass weave, but for you to think that I had on a wig would probably be just like, oh my God, no. And I really don't want it to look wiggish. So I am always like trying to find new ways to make my techniques blend or work out a lot better. Um, so you guys see, this is like one of my favorite um, wigs. Um, I made this one like over a year ago and this is one of my favorite. I had to do something different today with my leave out in the front. Now normally I don't do that. Like I never put a swoop in the front of the part. Like I see people do that all the time. And for some reason I'm just like, why do they do that? Like I don't understand. But then I thought it started looking really, really cute. So I decided to do it too. Um, I guess it's just to kind of like camouflage the front of the unit or whatever, which is like a cool idea. Um, I might have put a little bit too much, but okay, you know what I'm saying? But you know, and yes, I did use that fucking black gel again, that black edge gel um, by even New York. I didn't really use much of it. That shit is like a waste, not even a waste, but it's so thick. I don't really think that it's going to last as long. Um, but I did use some of that today on my hair. Um, just in little sp sparses of it. And no combs are um, in my wig. Well, there are combs in the wig, but they're not in my <sighs> edges. And it's so funny because they're actually growing back. I've seen little sparses of hair on my edges on the side. And I'm so excited about that. Like, so happy um, because a bitch do need some edges. You know, I told you guys, them shit still left. They ran away. My edges actually ran away. I think they felt like I just wasn't treating them right. And, you know, like when people don't feel like they're treated right, they leave. They run off. They run away. And so they probably found somebody else to be part of. You know, they just was like, we can't take this no more. We're, we're leaving. We're out. And that's what the fuck they did. So I've been putting out an APB and a missing report for them. You know, I've been trying to do everything to get them to come back. And hopefully, you know, they they think about it and they come back and they stick around. God knows. I hope they stick around when they do come back because the bitch need edges. OK, but lately I've been just wearing like lace fronts. Um, Normally I do just like to wear my own wigs that I make, which is like this one. But because my edges are a little bit thin on the side, um, I really don't want to put any combs in my hair. I have not been. now. The wigs that I like to wear the most are these, which are just the closure wigs, because I just like to take it off. I don't really like to do a lot. And when I make, it seems like when I make a lace frontal myself, like with the lace front, one minute it'll fit just perfect, then a minute it'll fit too big, then the next minute it'll fit like just fit, okay? So it's like, bitch, what the fuck is going on? Like, so I don't... 
I don't even know, you guys. I'm just going to have to find a perfecting technique and just leave it at that. But other than that, um, Tuesday, you know, you guys, next Tuesday, I'll be leaving to go back to New York. I'm going to get my mama. I'm going to see my husband for a week. And then I'm going to get my mama. We're going to come back here. But so I will be going. Um, I will do a real talk on probably like Monday. So that way I can have it uploaded for you guys on Wednesday. And other than that, there's really nothing new. Um, so we're going to get into this real talk, um, you guys. And, you know, what to do, make sure you send me an email if you want a real talk about your life situation or issue that you're going through. You can always send it to Muffin is my lover 2012 at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line, a real talk. And other than that, I hope you guys um, have checked out my latest videos because I have been posting, um, like, some newer videos. Well, not, they're not really new. So don't give me the lying, but, um, you know, I have been doing a little bit extra. Like I have been gluing the with the gluing, the wigs on the lace frontals. Normally I don't do all of that. Like sometimes I do. Um, but I really like to use like tape because I just really don't like the mess of that glue or that gel on your lace frontal, like all on the lace is just a mess. And as soon as you take it off, you definitely have to wash it because there's no way to get that off of your freaking cap of your lace, which sucks. So with tape, you don't have to even bother. You don't have to worry about that, which is great. But who says I want to wear the wig for like a day or two or three and then turn around and want to wash it right after that? Like I just worked hard to put this on in the curl and shit. Why the fuck would I want to wash this shit? So, um, yeah, I've been doing that for the videos, but I know an upcoming video I'm going to be doing, which is a new unit that I got from the RPG show. I am not about to glue that one with either, with nor wig glue, nor hair gel. I've got to be. I like to do the tape and I'm going to show you guys a really um, easy method for the tape. So that way you guys can get in a groove of things. And definitely I would not suggest putting tape near your hairline. Now being that my hairline is back here, like this is my, um, my edges are thin, but this is actually my hairline. Okay. This is, it's not pushed back though. I, I be feeling like it is, but you know what? It's, we feel like I have a, like, I do have a long head. Okay. But this is my hairline, unfortunately. Um, though I think it has been pushed back just a tad bit, okay? Because I did think that my hairline was like right here. But my head has always been long, all right? So that's why when y'all bitches be like, girl, you could fit anywhere. Yes, because I have a long enough forehead, a long enough head to where I have enough space for a lace front to where I don't have to put it right on my hairline. So if you don't have like a, like a forehead that's long enough, then I don't know what to tell you, but I do know this. Like if you have one of those little mini foreheads that's very short, then it's probably hard for you guys to situate a lace front. But for me, when I wear tape, I can put the tape like, listen, I can give myself a whole new fucking hairline, okay? Um, and that's what normally, that's probably why the units on me, when I do a wig, I put them down here and then they move back here. So my edges are always out. And that's not by default. It's just because of the way my hairline is. And I don't want it right here. So when I do a wig, a lace front with tape, I'm going to put it like down here. So look, if I have a hairline and I'm looking on the camera, on a, on a monitor, if I make my hairline to start right here, look, I still have mad space. That's why when you guys see like my other videos, sometimes you'll see like a, a shadow cast or whatever. It's lighter up here because I could put my wigs all the way down here. And I still got enough forehead. You would not even fucking know. Unless you probably like lift the sides up. So I try to avoid it being anywhere near my hairline. But I don't think like tape will take your edges or anything out. Especially if you know how to use tape. So that's the one key thing is knowing how to use it. But you know if you have a long enough forehead like me. Or a long enough head in general. Because everybody has told me in my family that I do have a long head. I never realized that until... My husband said it, and then my kids were like, yeah, mommy, your head is a little bit long. Like, wow. And then when I look at myself, I'm like, oh, yeah, bitch, you do have, like, a really long, like, a head. You, you, you like, got a head. You, like, a heady monster head. Like, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. So let's get into this real talk, you guys, okay? Huh? 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 What? Damn. 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 
So I guess this one is rather short. I guess this one is rather short, you guys. Um, so we're just going to get into this. I don't really know what happened to the picture that was attached to the email. Okay, yes, I do. Here it goes. Okay, so where is he at? Oh, he's in Japan. All right, okay. He's got on his little football sweatshirt type thing. Hey, Abra, I wrote you before on a real talk when my man left for the military and you gave me some good advice. You can call me Isha. I, Isha. I just want to say I love all your videos. Now, let me start off by saying my man is in the military still. I miss him so much. We have been video calling and texting. He'll be home this June of 2018. That's three more months, and I will have him home with me. And I was trying to plan stuff for us to do. I was wanting to know, do you have any advice for me? Below, I'm going to attach a picture of him. He is a good man. I got myself a good one, girl. So basically, this is all she, um, she's, Aisha just needs some advice. So her man is, looks like he is in Japan or China. I, I'm probably thinking it's Japan. It's a very nice city. Yes, I like it. Looks very busy. But they be video chatting and texting and stuff. And he about to come home in June. So she wants to know what kind of advice can we give her to plan for her and her fiance her man for when he comes home from the military which is in june she was she, you know something for them to do so first of all you know being in the military it's hard work they they get up early they they on a guard for their lives because they are basically you know defending the united states our country and so a lot of times they work a lot and so i'm pretty sure when they do get a time to rest that they are probably slumped you know what i'm saying like they really want to relax and rest so for me i mean i know if i was a, if i was working like that like because the military is not a job where you could just take off like i think like honestly even if they do have them working monday through friday or whatever i still believe that it's still a 24 7 hour around the clock type of job and correct me if i'm wrong but but this is how i feel about it you know what i'm saying like and if there's anybody out there who's man or themselves or in the military please comment below like you know what do you feel or what is it like to be a part of the military as in working for them and being a part of it like for me i know like you know what i'm saying maybe basic training is like maybe like a monday through friday type of thing but i do feel this even if it was like set hours you're still on the clock you're still working all day every day for the military whether you at home taking a nap your punk ass is still on the clock because you belong to them so being in the military is like a hectic job it's a hard job you know what i'm saying you're defending your country you're doing a lot of vigorous movement and works and working out and training and doing things like that so i know like when they do and you're deployed so i know when you deploy you ain't just sitting around just chilling i'm pretty sure you're not but I just feel like for a lot of people that work like very, very hard, vigorous jobs like that, like they look for time for rest and relaxation. Not saying that they want to not do anything at all, but I'm pretty sure that they feel like they want to rest and relax. However, with that being said, if it were me, I would definitely go to like a day spa with him. You know what I'm saying? I think that would be like really relaxing because for one, you're taking it into account. He wants to relax. He wants to rest. Plus, you're always also giving him good health. I don't really think that in the army or any type of military environment that they got a spa. I mean, I'm pretty sure they do on the military base, but I don't think that any of them are going to that and being able to relax. So, for one, I think like it would be really cool to start the day off with like a very light breakfast. You know, you can make him a very light breakfast. Or maybe you guys can go to somewhere that's um like a nice place to stay overnight. It's always nice to be away from home sometimes. However, if you've been gone for so long, it is nice to be at home. So I think like for the first night that he's here, that the day that he gets there, you know, just cook him a good meal. He'll probably want to be around his friends and family, and that's great. But for the next morning, morning i would definitely suggest making him like a nice breakfast you know what i'm saying something light so that way you guys can you know enjoy maybe some mimosas together and then you guys can go to a day spa i just think like a day spa would be really romantic for you and he you know what i'm saying you guys go and have like the entire day not like just no just get your feet done and go home not like no nail place like so some people think like going to get your nails done is a spa bitch no that's not a motherfucking spa that's 
that's just you going to get your goddamn nails done. What I think like is like a day spa. It's like a spa, a day spa where you're getting a multiple of things done. You're getting massages. You're getting like seaweed wrap, wraps. You're getting your feet done, your nails done, your facials. You're getting all that stuff done. And you're being pampered, basically. You're being pampered. You're being taken care of. So I think like that would be a great thing to do for the remainder of the morning to like mid afternoon mid um you know maybe like around four or five that would be great and then you guys could like go out to eat like somewhere really romantic or you guys can from that from the spa you guys can go home and you can have like a nice dinner date at home i think like you know i like to go out to eat don't get me wrong but sometimes it's nice to just be at home with your loved one and relax because you know you can sip some wine you guys can have a good talk y'all can get a little freaky freaky deaky after that i mean you guys could definitely get freaky deaky after the restaurant but listen let me tell you something don't nobody feel like traveling from the restaurant to the home to get their freak on. Like, seriously. Because sometimes you at the restaurant, it's getting all riled up. And you got to wait till you get all the way home. And it's like, okay, I might have lost some of the momentum. So that's why I say, you know, have a nice, like, breakfast. Make him a nice, like, breakfast. Then you guys have a nice day at the spa. Because, listen, he's going and he's getting massages. He's getting pampered. Some of that stuff makes you a little bit horny and frisky. So that's why I say after that, you guys have a nice dinner date at home. Now, you don't have to cook anything. And I don't think that you should because that kind of takes away the time that you're being spent with him. Unless you guys want to cook something together. However, I just don't think that that would be a really good idea. What I think that yeah, you should do is have like a meal planned already. Like maybe have something delivered, order in advance. You know, like, hey, can you have this delivered here at this t certain time? And watch a nice movie. It doesn't have to be romantic, but make sure that it's not like action pack because he didn't already came from the military and he didn't already been dealing with all of that action and shit like that. So I think something like maybe something funny would be really nice too. Like something funny would be really cool. Maybe like um I love that movie where um oh god it's um oh god Tay Diggs is in it. Um Morris Chestnut Morris Chestnut is in it. Um Oh, you guys know what movie I'm talking about. And Morris Chestnut was getting married. And what was it called? Um, Brother or Brotherhood? I don't know. You know you know what I'm talking about, you guys. And then his wife died, you know, like in like the, I think like the second one or whatever. And then Tay Diggs got beat up in the first one. You guys know what movie I'm talking about. I cannot think of it at the top of my head right now. But I like that movie and I think that it's cool. Like you guys can watch like the two of, I think there's two of them. Um, But you guys can watch that together. And you know what I'm saying? And eat and have like nice little snack platters. Like, you know what I'm saying? Have a nice light dinner because I'm sorry, I don't want to have sex and get freaky on a full stomach. Because for one, listen, when you eat, you have to end up using the bathroom or passing a little bit of gas. And I don't think that's romantic. So what I'm saying is don't get yourselves like a big heavy meal. Like when you order something, don't order something heavy like steak and potatoes and shit like that. Because a nigga will get to being um, gassy and having to use the bathroom. And then it's like, do I really want to fuck you right now? Like, seriously, you just farted all over here, and I don't really know about putting my face down there or none of that shit. So, I'm just saying, like, I think, like, for the first day, that would be really great. Like, you know, light breakfast, a day spa with just you and him, okay? And then you go home, you have, like, a nice little light, um, light dinner, but make sure you guys have, like, some drinks. I don't know if you guys drink wine. I don't really fuck with wine. It makes me tired. Listen, if a bitch is gonna drink, I'm gonna have some vodka and some shit, and I'm... I smoke too, but that's, that's, that's not what y'all do because he's in the military, but I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? That that was just me. So anyway, um, I would do that for the first day and just like a little light break, like light dinner. When I say like a light dinner, maybe like some, like a nice salad, a nice little Caesar salad. I love Caesar salads with chicken and like, you know, I don't really fuck with croutons, but you know, like sit like that and like some strawberries, like you can feed them to him, like. Put them all over his body, girl. You know what I'm saying? Get it, get it popping. Oh, I think I got some ideas for that. Because listen, my my husband's birthday is Thursday. It's coming Thursday, so I won't be there. But he got a little package coming. But I will be there next week. So I might have to give me some a little. Like, let's get it on. Oh, okay. Anyway, it's not about me right now. Okay. But I'm just saying, you know, saying that would be cool to do for the first night. You know, like I'm saying, a little nice light salad. 
and some nice fruit. Not too many fruits. Like, bitch, don't give, like, no plums and raisins and prunes and shit. Because I just said you don't want the nigga to be passing no gas and going to the bathroom. And you neither. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit like that, you know. Then the next day, it doesn't even have necessarily have to be the next day. But, you know, give him some time to spend with friends and family and you to do the same. I think, like, it would be cool if you guys have a house or you have a house or if you have a family member that has a house that you guys like to be around. I think, like, a nice family barbecue would be really, really nice because people that are away in the military, they do miss their family and their loved ones. So I think, like, doing something like that for him, showing him shows that you care about him and you're concerned something with his family and of course you can invite yours as well as long as they get along because we don't want to have no extra drama going on but you know what i'm saying like make a nice little plan out a nice family barbecue for him so that way he can be able to see all his family members because like i said people miss their spouses or their loved ones when they're away uh, deployment so i think that would be also a great idea and plan to do now definitely you'd want him all to yourself and i can totally get that you know you always got the evening when it unwinds but you know saying for the first day you know you do that with just you and he and then like the second day the very next morning you guys you can have like a family barbecue you can you know something planned out like a surprise you know what i'm saying like a surprise and also um in three months it's gonna be june so it's gonna be hot outside and I mean, I love going to the amusement parks, you know what I'm saying? I love going to, like, the amusement parks. I don't like rides because I don't do the ride thing, but I do like to walk around the park, and I like to see the sights, and I do like to, like, eat the foods and things like that. And, you know, you just see different people and just different things, and you play games. So I do like to do stuff like that. So I think, like, going to, like, a nice water park would be, like, really great, um, and just to have fun. And it's fun for him to do something like that, you know, started off with like early you know those type of things you definitely want to do early in the morning so definitely like go to like a nice water park during the morning and you guys can unwind maybe enjoy a movie or go out to eat okay and then go home and just relax you know you can do things like that like we take little things for granted um i like you know what i'm not really sure what state you live in but for me i like to do things like i like to go to the zoo and just, you know, you walk around, you hold, you hold your spouse's hands and you go to the zoo and you just look at things or like museum, Museum of Natural History in New York. I like to do stuff like that. That's what I like to do. I don't do the club scene. I don't like to go to the clubs. I don't like to do any of that stuff. But I do like to do things that are very like interesting and don't have no drama. Even like uh, a jazz club. Like I like all types of music, but I'm not like a huge fan of rap music. So I'm definitely not going to no clubs. But I do like to go to like a jazz um like a jazz club because you can sit at the table and you can hear each other as you're talking and just the entire environment is like nice and sensual you know what i'm saying so i think like things like that are like really beneficial to do but most of all most importantly make sure that you pamper him and he's relaxed and he's not overwhelmed and he's not over like you know worked or anything like that because they've already been through a lot and just to travel from where he's at to you is a long distance so i definitely would give him like that day at the spa the very next day so he would just feel unrelaxed so that way when he get relaxed he get massage girl he could he could put that work in i'm just saying okay i'm just saying so yes you guys give aisha your ideas of what she can do for her man when he comes home from the military in June, um, what would you do? And also for those who are in the military or have a loved one that's in the military, do you think that the job is 24-7? Like, even though it might be like a Monday through Friday thing, do you still think it's still 24-7? What is your experience with it? So now we're going to move on to the next um, email. Okay, okay. This one is a good one, okay? Um, real talk, his parents got to bounce with the do sign, okay? This is going to be a really long one. I'm changing the names to conceal the identities of the people in my real talk. My name is Key. I'm 22 years old, and my fiance's name is Jay. He's 25 years old. My fiance and I live in an apartment with his daughter, who is six. This is our first ever actual apartment. About two months ago, his car broke down. We later found out that the alternator went, and we ended up applying for a Firestone credit card to fix it. Then about a month later, my car broke down. So now we both were without vehicles. We had to scrape up money for Ubers. Girl, they ain't cheap. You ain't got to tell me. I know. But sometimes my mother would help out and make sure we got back and forth to work. Now let me rewind a little bit. When my fiance's car broke down, his parents told him not to worry about it because they were going to have someone tow the car and fix it for him. 
At the last minute, they bailed. This is why we had to Uber and find rides and eventually got the credit card from Firestone. His car was, his car was our only means of transportation, and his parents bailed on him. There was one time his parents left him stranded out in the cold, and my fiancé had to walk to the closest library. When they picked him up, they had an attitude. They always have an attitude with everything that pertains to him. Why have an attitude? Because your son called for help. It's so cold, and you'd rather have your own flesh and blood sit out in the freezing cold? Hmm. So now we are past the car trouble. His car is fixed, and we're back on our feet somewhat in terms of reliable transportation. Jay has a younger sister who is a little older than his daughter, who is six years old. So remember, Jay's daughter is six. Whenever we take Jay's daughter out, his parents expect him to take his sister out as well. If he doesn't, they have an attitude. It's mainly his mother who has the issue. His father just feeds off of the energy of the mother. When we take her out, she'll get mad and walk off. When we take when we when we take Jay's little sister out, she'll get mad and walk off if she doesn't get her way, or she'll say a lot of slick shit and and isolate herself. There was one time me, Jay, and his daughter and my sister went off to a buffet. My car at the time only had four seats, so there was only room for four people. When his mom found out, oh excuse me. It was one time when it was me, Jay, his daughter, and my sister. We went to a buffet. So that's four people. It was Key, her fiance, Jay, Jay's daughter, and Key's little sister. We went out to a buffet. My car at the time only had four seats, so there was only room for four people. When his mom found out, she was heated. She got mad because we didn't take Jay's little sister. But God forbid if we got into an accident and she flew through the windshield, that would have been my ass. There were, there were a lot of other incidents, but I have so much more to say in this email. I don't want to take it, too much of your time and make it too long. Recently, because of all of the previous car trouble, we have been behind in rent trying to play catch up. We were issued a court notice to appear in court for possible eviction. Income tax time is around and we were banking on that to come in time to pay off all of our back rent. However, it didn't come in. His mother said that she'll pay for our back rent because her income tax came in. We just had to pay her back when we get ours. No problem. April, she waits until two days before our court date to say, no, I can't help y'all with the rent. And when Jay asks why, she catches a whole attitude saying, I have my own issues to worry about. I'm not worried about you and I don't care what's going on over there. April, I don't understand we're adults. I don't understand we're adults and we have to learn to be independent. But damn, don't offer to pay off someone's debt and put them at ease and then wait until last minute to cancel out and, and say some rude ass shit. Now we have $1,300 to pay off and possibly be evicted tomorrow morning. His parents seem like they don't care for him at all. He's been working since he was 14. He's been giving all his paychecks to his parents and they would use it towards their mortgage so they say, so they say he was basically volunteering at his jobs because he never had money to actually use for himself because he would give it all to his parents. He would ask them for like five to ten dollars for gas and they would have an attitude giving him his own money. Some parents have have it where if you live in their household, you have to pay rent, pay towards rent. I get that. Not your whole damn paycheck, though. His sister is a couple years younger than him. And well, he must have got another sister. His sister is a couple years younger than him and was working and they never asked her for money. If they did, she asked them for what? And go about her business, not give and go about her business, not giving a damn. Mm. About a year ago, I moved into a studio that he had. He was still giving his parents money to pay off their mortgage when he had his own rent to pay as well. We once went two weeks with no groceries because his, because he gave his parents money for their mortgage and he didn't live there anymore. One day we went to the mall to get family portraits done, Jay, me, and his daughter. We came out of JCPenney and his family, his mom, dad, and both his sisters were sitting in the food court eating off of his money that he gave them for mortgage. When we walked up to them, they just had a blank stare as though they had saw ghosts. We walked to the car and his mom sends him this long ass text saying how it's not right that he didn't take his little sister along with us. Once again, not our problem. We have family portraits done for our family. After that incident, he stopped giving them money. 
They shut him out the house once and left all his mail outside because he refused to give them money after that mall incident. He starved. We starved for two weeks to let y'all hold money for mortgage and y'all out at the mall living y'all best life. My fiance is 25 years old, a grown man. Yes, but he's out here working and going back to school to make sure his daughter and I are straight. He has a very active role in his daughter's life and is the most amazing, hardworking man I've ever seen. They don't appreciate him at all. We could be out here selling drugs in 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 and out of jail, a deadbeat. He could be out here selling drugs in and out of jail and a deadbeat father, but no, he has his head on straight and they don't value that at all. On the other hand, his sister is out here partying, coming home whenever she feels like it, unemployed, sleeping in motels with random guys, posting pictures on Facebook with her boobs all out, smoking weed and drinking, not paying a damn thing towards mortgage, but he's a bum. They'll get drunk and say nice things about him and then sober up and switch up on him real quick. You never know which side you're going to get dealing with them. What broke my heart is when he came to me after a couple days ago, after work a couple days ago and asked, why me? Why doesn't my family love me? I'm the nicest one out of everybody and I get treated like shit. I'm always, I've always made sure my parents were straight. Anything they needed, I had their back. When I need help, they're not there and they don't want to be there for me. They have done him dirty numerous times, telling him they're going to be gone. They're going to be, excuse me. They have done him dirty numerous times, telling him they're going to do one thing and not do it at all. Come at, come at, not do it. Come at his parent. Oh, come at him for his parenting skills. Tap his pockets. The list of this, the list of disrespect to my boyfriend or my fiance goes on, but he still has that unconditional love for them. I get it. They're his parents. But April, my question to you is, should he completely cut his parents off? Should he just move on with his life without his parents? What would you do in this situation? Thanks for the e um, thanks for the time of taking the time to read this long email, but he needs to see what his situation looks like from the outside. And their family portrait picture is so freaking cute. I'm so sorry to hear that about Jay. You know what I'm saying? So Jay and Key are fiance. He's 25 and Key is, I think she said she's either 19 or 21. Um, She's 22, excuse me. He's 25 and he has a daughter who's six years old that lives there as well. But he also has his mother, his father, and he has two sisters. And his his younger sister, who's probably a couple years older than his own daughter, his mother always expects him to take her along with them. First of all, let me tell you something. I understand the whole thing about charging your kids rent money because when they have a job and they are responsible, yes, they should pay rent to live with you. Why should you take the load of paying all the bills if they and they're going to work? You shouldn't have to stack your money. That's also helping them be responsible. But you're not supposed to take all of their money. Like, you know, what I'm saying like I would not charge my kids all that money to live here. Like my son and my daughter, Tati, they pay me rent money to live here. And it includes, let me tell you, it includes electricity, internet, cell phone bills, food, hot water, cold water, um, ele ele does that electricity, heat, it includes everything, you know what I'm saying? So that's what they pay for. And, you know, like doing your laundry, household things like soap, toilet paper, it includes all of that stuff. So they don't have to do anything but pay me $300 a month. I would ne never dare take all of their money. You know what I'm saying? Um, but if you don't live there and if, you're if your children don't live at home with you any longer, why the fuck would you charge them rent money? Like Jay's a good, good son because he's paying for his own rent. Plus he's still paying for his parents' mortgage and he don't even live there. Man, please. I wouldn't be giving them a motherfucking dime. Like, listen, I understand we are to love thy parents. Okay. And not disrespect them. However, it's one thing where you are struggling just to make ends meet. And now here it is. I'm giving you money to pay your mortgage. And then I can't even eat for two weeks. And then when I ask you for a favor, you say you're going to do something and you don't even do it. This is where you guys have to realize that when you say you grown, niggas bitches be motherfucking grown now i understand our kids always get into some shit where we have to bail them out trust me i fucking am the one to tell you because i know this oh so well well my son who is about to be 26 the one that's having a baby again with his girlfriend okay yeah he gets into a little debt or not even debt but sometimes he has issues with his car who do he fucking call 
You know, I have given him enough money on enough occasions to help him out. And after a while, it do get a little bit tedious. However, him and Jay ain't the same type of person. And if I'm reading him like this and then I know my son, then you know what? After a while, you start feeling some type of way. But I had to just tell him, no, I'm not. No, no. Because every time you get into a jam, you always depend on me and I give it to you and I cannot keep doing that. So now I'm not going to do as much as I can for you or I'm not just going to do anything for you at all because you have your family and I have mine and you're an adult. You know what I'm saying? So what, of course, he probably mad or whatever. But here's the thing. When we want to be adults and we want to grow up, we have to fend for ourselves. Now, I get it. If someone tells you this, hey, I'm going to help you with your rent. I'm going to pay your back rent. This is me. And you know something? This is me with anything. It doesn't even have to do with my rent because I've never asked anybody to pay my motherfucking rent. And if somebody wants to pay my rent, then you can go ahead and send me the money to my PayPal. Which, and just the whole muffin is my lover 2012 at gmail.com. If you want to send me any type of money and donations for my motherfucking rent, that email that's down there, you can definitely go ahead and do that. I'm not going to dispute that. But here, what I'm saying is this. This is me with any type of situation. If I ask somebody to do something for me that I can do but I can't do, I'm not really going to bank on that. That's like me saying, well, can you take my car to get fixed for me? And or, and you'd be like, yeah, I'm going to take your car. I'll, or, or you just offer it. Hey, I'll take your car and get fixed. I'll pay for it. Now, I'm glad that you offered me that thank you, and I want to believe you, but me, I don't really have faith and belief in a lot of people and people in general. So when you tell me you're going to do something for me, I already have my backup plan to do that shit for myself. Because for one, um, oh, name was getting her nails done. Um, for one, I'm not about to sit here and depend on you to do something for me, and then you just bail the fuck out, and then I'm left stuck like stuck jack the fuck up like that's not cool i'm not about to go through any of that shit with anybody you know what i'm saying okay so when his mother did offer you guys that she would pay the rent for you guys with her income tax and you would pay it back she wasn't giving you the money she was loaning it to you but she still told you that you had to pay it back listen 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 key I would have still made plans to get some type of money up so that way I wouldn't have to depend on anybody else to pay my fucking rent and me end up possibly getting evicted. That's the one thing that I would have did. Thanks, Mama Duke. For, th thanks, Mama Duke, for, you know, offering. And I would take that offering, but in the back scenes, you know, where nobody sees in the back scenes, a bitch going to try to find a, a way to get her rent paid still i'm gonna try to come up with some type of funds so if she has to give me 1300 and i got five here bitch you only have to give me 800 i got five for you you know what i'm saying never depend and rely on another source like you know when you get married you want to depend on your husband you want to depend on your wife you want to depend on them to do everything for you but me Listen, I am not the type of person that likes to get let down. If you let me the fuck down, I'm going to be very pissed the fuck off and I'm going to be very disappointed. So when I ask you to do something, for one, it's hard for me to ask anybody for anything because I don't like the word no. But if I depend on you and you don't do it for me that one particular time, then I'm not going to depend on you for anything else. Okay, yeah, you offered again, thanks, and I'll accept that offer, but in the back, Back burner, back shit. I'm still planning for my shit ahead of time. You know what I'm saying? Just like, you know, well, I can't even say that for the um airport shit when I'm when I went to New York the last time. Cause that bitch Devin, um, you know what I'm saying, she she offered. I didn't ask that bitch to take me. She offered. She offered me both fucking times when I went to New York. And I took her up on her offer. Now the second time when I went. She offered the bitch came here. I guess I was two minutes too long and the bitch decided to go home. Fine. This is what I'm talking about with people. But I already had my own plan. Bitch, that's what Lyft and Uber is for, okay? I got credits for days for them and I don't really need you. However, I didn't appreciate what you did, but this is why I don't rely on people for shit. If you tell me you're going to do something, then hey, that's just like with my kids. They, they know they got to give me the rent money. They got to give me rent money. But if they didn't have it, I'm not going to bank on their money and spend mine's up. No, I'm still going to make sure that the rent is paid and then they can pay it back later. Either way, I don't really feel like we as human beings and as adults should be relying on another adult 
who is not responsible for us. It's not his mother's responsibility to pay your fucking rent. It's not. Now, it, and it's not Jay's responsibility to be paying a motherfucking mortgage. So see, this is how it works out. They mad because y'all or he didn't pay their mortgage. Why the fuck should he? You just told us you would help us. And then two days prior to that, you told us, no, we, you, you ain't worried about us over here. We got our own. You got your own issues. Same thing that he should have felt. When it was time for his parents' mortgage to pay, be paid, well, I'm not worried about y'all issues. I got my own issues over here to deal with and worry about. Why the fuck would I want to pay your mortgage and my rent? You know what I'm saying? The car situation, you know, I I, I can understand, you know, as an adult, that's your car. I, I got tired of helping my son with his car, you know what I'm saying? Because I didn't buy that car for you. Why should I be paying your car insurance? I got two cars of my own that I got to pay car insurance for. Why should I get your shit fixed when I have two cars of my own that may need fixing? Nobody helps me pay for my cars. Nobody helps me pay for my car insurance. Nobody helps me pay for the repairs that's needed. Nobody helps me for gas and that shit. Everything that's done for my cars is done for me. So I feel like you should do the same fucking thing for your own goddamn cars, okay? And it's after a while it gets to be like... Like a burden like you know what you keep asking and asking like i am not the atm of america like quit it so i can totally understand like you know sometimes we have to fend for ourselves as adults sometimes we have to go without we can't always rely on our parents though we are family and we would like to be able to rely on them sometimes we have to buckle down and depend on nobody but yourself because if you depend on just yourself then i guarantee you shit will get done and you won't be disappointed but if you depend on other people alone and not other people and yourself then you're gonna be fucked and screwed in the long run you know what i'm saying so here's one thing you know about his little sister i i get that maybe his mother wants her to spend time with him but that is not his responsibility he should not have to be feeling like he's forced to drag his little sister from point A to B. When you and him are out with his daughter, y'all are a family. Y'all are a unit together. Now, granted, it's nice to invite the little girl around once in a while because she's in the same age bracket, but this is not something that we're going to do all the time. And then if I don't do it, my dukes, you're going to catch your attitude. This is your responsibility. This is your responsibility. You know what I'm saying? Not mine. I'm not going to always have her around if she's catching attitudes, if she's being disrespectful, if she can't get her way. Nobody wants to be around a child that's fucking irritating like that. Like, trust me. I love kids, okay? I love them. They're great and shit like that. But sometimes it's like, listen, if you want to be acting like a little spoiled motherfucker, then stay your ass somewhere the fuck else, okay? Like, seriously, stay somewhere the fuck else. Um, I mean, like, listen... I'm not saying that he should cut his parents off because those are his parents. However, the things that they've done to him, I don't say it's wrong and I don't say it's right. You know what I'm saying? But as an adult, we have to sometimes just not depend on them. Sometimes we got to leave shit alone. For one, I would not be paying their mortgage, okay? Maybe if they got in a jam and they couldn't pay their own mortgage, then I would definitely help because I would never want to see my parents homeless. However, we're not going to do this every month where I'm paying my rent and your mortgage and we starving over here while y'all bitches is out eating at the motherfucking mortgage more full court with my fucking money like no we're not about to do that if you in a jam i would be more than happy to help you out however one hand do wash the other you know what i'm saying one hand do wash the other so do unto others as you would want done unto you however i wouldn't do one thing i wouldn't keep asking them for help at all because for what if you're going to ask them for help, all they're going to do is kick you in the motherfucking ass. They got their foot so far up your motherfucking asses that y'all don't even know what to fuck to do. All y'all smell is fucking sneakers and soles. Shit and sneakers and soles out the crack of y'all asses. Like, seriously, I'll tell you that. Sometimes we got to distance ourselves from even our loved ones, you know, because we go through family shit. And the only time and the only thing that we can do to make shit better is just to distance ourselves and to leave it the fuck alone. You know what I'm saying? If he feels like he is being mistreated and such, then maybe he should just leave it alone for a little while because I think that's good. Like get a rest from it, take a break from it and just step away. And then later on in life, maybe not when I say later on in life, I don't mean bitch like three or four years from now, maybe like a few weeks to a month or a couple months from now, he needs to 
bring up the subject to his parents of why he feels the way he does. Because if he doesn't, he's never going to be treated any different. And if he's about to be 26 years old, he's a grown ass man. There is no reason for them to be treating him like he's some motherfucking stepchild or some adopted child that they don't give a fuck about. You know what I'm saying? Like if you, it's one hand wash the other. And it doesn't matter if that's your children. You still have to show them respect too. A lot of parents feel like because it's their kids, they don't have to respect them. But that's not true. They are human beings just like we are. And they deserve respect. Don't nobody like to feel like they not wanted. And don't nobody like to feel like they being mistreated. Like straight up. So for me, I would definitely say that for right now, maybe he should walk away from it. And leave it the fuck alone. And see how they react to it. See if they come around and you know what I'm saying and, and help him out or see if they just say, Hey Jay, we haven't heard from you. How's it going? How's the family? If they can't do that much, if they can't do that much, then listen, honeys, sometimes you got to step all the way the fuck back, like seriously, and not even bother. I'm just saying. So on that note, we're going to move on to the next one. Cause listen, I got to get my girl in a few minutes. Okay. Hey, April, I love your channel. Reaching out to you for a little insight in my situation. All names have been changed. Currently, I have two daughters with a guy I have been with for over about 12 years. My oldest is eight and my youngest is one. We can call him Brad and me, you can call Ann. I met Brad through my stepsister when I was in graduate school. Well, Brad is from a state about nine hours away. We dated long distance for two years before he moved to my hometown, my state. About a year after he moved to my home state, we have had... We had our oldest daughter things have not been good at all things have not been good all the time he has completely dogged me cheating so bad with different women but tells me he only loves me it has been so bad i have even left him in the home we purchased together for two years and rented an apartment just to get away from all his lies and cheating he continued he continued to be a whore and kept messing around with the same woman that tore us apart. He gave me a ring and convinced me to come back home. Well, fast forward present day, we still are not married and he has given me this ring in 2014. I have caught him cheating since then as well. Recently, Brad's older brother and his wife relocated from his home state to a town about an hour and a half away from where we currently live. Since his brother moved to his town, Brad is constantly bothering me about moving there as well. Now he says he hates where we live. Mind you, he has been living there about 10 years and loved it until his brother decided to move closer. My family is in this town and they support me and have been in my life and has helped me with my children when Brad falls short, which is often. I don't feel secure enough to leave my family to be near his. His family will always have his back and I will be outcasted. I feel like he wants to move into this new town just to have a new stopping ground to be a new whore and just to be a whore in general. My mother watches our one year old so we can work and do not have to pay child, high child care. If we move, I would have to one pay child care because I have, um, I have, and I make the most money. He is very inconsiderate when it comes to me. He assists with the bills, but will hop in his car and go where he wants and leave me home with the kids. He also goes to bed and leaves me up with the baby and doesn't care. He excuses his work well. So do I. His excuse is he works well. He works hard. Well, so do I. When I need rest or someone or some. When I need rest or some me time, my family helps me. Um, okay, yeah, my family helps me. So moving will be a loss on my end. He has nothing to lose. Granted, it's only one and a half hours away, but during the week, we'll be working and need help with the kids. So on the weekend, I'll probably be too tired to drive down to my family. If I do not move, it will probably end our relationship. But honestly, I'm starting not to care. When me and my children are home alone, we are at peace. When he comes home, it's nothing but complaining. I just keep thinking if I leave him, he will give that next woman everything I wanted, which is marriage. So I keep holding on. Please, April, I need some insight. Thank you so much. Shh. So basically, mm, oh, her little girls are so cute. They little matching outfits. Oh, they look so cute. They got their little matching outfits on headbands, shirt, pants. That's so cute. Okay, so she got a 12-year-old. Oh, excuse me. They've been together for 12 years, her and her boyfriend. And they got an 8-year-old and a 1-year-old. Two little girls. Okay, so they've been together for over 12 years. And Brad has been nothing but a fucking whoremonger, a fucking whore beast, a dog, a cheat, a scumbag, and everything fucking else. Been cheating on his girl left and right. She done moved out of the house they bought together and lived in her own, on her own. He done promised to behave himself 
himself, give her a ring and marry her, and please come back home. And he's still doing the same dumb shit. Now his brother done moved closer to him an hour and a half away. And now he want to move in that same town. First of all, sweetheart, I wouldn't even be second guessing the move thing. Tell that nigga goodbye and go. Because listen, like you said, when he ain't around, it's peace and quiet. You guys can breathe and see the fucking life. When he there, it's like a drab, dreary nonsense. Let me tell you something. All he gonna do is constantly cheat on you and cheat on you and cheat on you. Why the fuck would you move from another town to another one just to be around a fucking dog, okay? When you lay with dogs, you wake up with fleas, bitch, okay? You do not want to wake up with no motherfucking fleas. I can get it. You love him. You have kids with him. But you know something? As long as you allow him and as long as you still there, this nigga is never going to change. He's going to continue to do the same thing over and over and over and over again. And if you honestly feel like if you leave him, he's going to give the next woman everything you wanted and then some, let him, okay? Let the nigga have the bitch. Let him. Let him be somebody else's fucking problem. Let him be somebody else's fucking headache. I'd be damned if I'ma allow any motherfucking person, man or female, anything annoy me and aggravate me to the point where I cannot fucking take it no longer. Like on some real shit, this nigga cheating on you, he can bring you all type of diseases and shit back home. And on top of that, you just say he's been cheating on you with the same fucking bitch. Listen, let him have her, let her have him, because what's going to happen is everything might be all honky during the beginning with him and her together, but that shit is only short fucking lived, okay? When I say short lived, that nigga ain't going to fucking never be the same. He ain't going to never change. He going to want to have his cake and eat it too. That's why you still there and he got this other bitch that's still there. When y'all bitches like that, y'all stay and y'all stay, be, and, and y'all know he's cheating, and y'all still stay, he got it good, the nigga got his feet the fuck up, he like putting his feet up and shit, you know, he got, he's resting back, he got his feet up, he got his coffee, his tea, his cake, his liquor, and he got extra pit of pussy over here, and some over here, bitch please, let me tell you something, I think it would be best if you let that nigga go ahead somewhere and let him go live in that town with his brother. Because for one, I wouldn't want that nigga nowhere near me. Because for two, you are being humiliated and ridiculed and laughed at whether you think you are or not. You think that he and you are the only motherfuckers that know that he's been cheating on you. Well, first of all, he got that bitch on the side that he's been cheating with you for many, many years. And y'all already know bitches stay running their motherfucking mouths. And I know y'all probably looking at me like, what, bitch? Yes. Y'all bitches know some of y'all be stay running your mouth or if you ain't you got a friend or a family member that stay running their motherfucking mouth so you got this bitch that he's fucking with on the side talking to her little bitch friends talking about yeah girl please <laughs> he ain't worried about that bitch he stay fucking me hmm he is not worried about her shit that's why he always come back to me so she telling her little bitch friends and whoever else and they running around like ridiculing you whether you know it or not why the fuck would you want to even put yourself in a predicament like that over some dick that ain't even worth it like you don't even want to be bothered you don't even care so your answer to that question of what should she do bitch leave him the fuck alone let that nigga go ahead bye bye see ya you got your family in your hometown why the hell would you leave your family for the devil's son like the devil's spawn like does that make any sense to you guys? So you guys are living like, okay, so we living together in Arizona. And all you've been doing is cheating on me and dogging me out and fucking this and that bitch and still staying, staying the fucking same, fucking the same bitch. You don't barely help me with the bills. You run out, you leave the kids with me. You don't do nothing. You don't pick up the slack. Here it is. I'm tired. I'm cheating on and I feel like shit and I don't even care about you anymore. Um, but we gonna, I'm going to move to the next town over like an hour and a half away with you because what your brother lives there and we have kids together. Nigga, bye. I wouldn't give a fuck if that town was 15 minutes away. Nigga, bye. Okay, I wouldn't give a shit if that shit was around the block. Nigga, goodbye. I'm not about to put myself out of my comfort zone of be a uh, meaning around my family to be with some low life scumbag to be in another town. So you're going to get around his family and all he's going to do is dog you. You just said you feel like an outcast. You're already an outcast. Okay? In your own motherfucking home. You're already an outcast in your own home because the nigga don't do shit. And now you want to ask me, should you move away? Bitch, no. If you want to move the fuck away, you can come right here to Arizona, bitch. And you can live comfortably and you can relax. But I promise you and I guarantee you this. He is going to be the same motherfucker in another whole new town. Now he got new bitches. And he now he really about to be a whore. Sweetheart.
It's time to let him go. He is never going to change. It's time to let his ass the fuck go. It's one thing when you have kids with somebody, and sometimes that may tie y'all together, but let me tell you something. Your kids see all of that foolishness that you're going through. They see that their father don't treat you right. You may not think that they do because they're young, but kids do understand, and kids know. You know what I'm saying? There's shit that you don't even have to tell kids because they have eyes. They have visual. They can see without you having to tell them. They feel it. That's like a form of disrespect to them, a form of child abuse. Why would you want to put your children in that type of an environment? You know what I'm saying? So then now you moved an hour and a half away. You miserable and unhappy as fuck and you're away from your family members you have nobody but your two little kids you know what i'm saying like that makes no sense to me like there's no way on god's green earth was i fucking move anywhere around him i wouldn't even be with his ass anymore let alone move somewhere with him shit if i could i would push that nigga off the face of the earth but you know that's never gonna happen so the best thing for you to do before you lose your insanity your sanity is to to leave him alone like seriously leave him alone hello 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 yeah i'm on my way okay all right i'll be there in like three minutes Okay, so see, it's 3.15. I got to go because it's my mumsy on the phone. But like I said, um, you guys, sweetheart, you have two beautiful daughters. You're sitting around waiting for some man to change. And you're also showing your daughters that it's okay to be with somebody like that. So when they get old enough and they're able to date someone and find a man, the type of man that they're going to find is going to be someone like their father, God forbid. So my suggestion to you would be to, to run. Bitch, run. Run as fast as you can. You can always have child visitation. But with that, no. You never know. The grass is always greener on the other side sometimes. When you leave somebody alone like that that makes your life miserable, you find yourself, you find peace with your, within yourself, and you're able to regain the respect for yourself again. And then that's when the right person comes along in your life. You know what I'm saying? But in the meantime, what I would definitely do is just seek some child support and get yourself and your daughters together because there's no reason for you to be miserable and your kids as well no way girl tell that goodbye so now note, you guys i'm sorry i have to hurry up and rush i can't be leaving my mumsy out there i love you guys stay diva and delicious even though she's only like a block away her school is actually in garden lakes where i live at so yeah you guys i love you stay diva and delicious make sure you rate comment subscribe leave your comments below and i'll see you guys in the next video what? Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 Mm.